So Bob, you've been coming to Cannes, I guess, for quite a few years now. Um, but I think this might be so far your successful, most successful can ever, is that right? So far. So tell us a little bit about um, what you're hoping to get out of this week. Um, well, I think so far we've we've um, won uh, 14 lines, so and we were we're up. Uh, I think we have something like 54 uh, on the uh, short list, which to me is really amazing since it's just the second day. But um, I think the most important thing for me is um, a couple of things. One is. Um, uh, this Wednesday tomorrow, we'll be doing a speech on uh, startups, and we have an incredible accelerator that's um, that's uh, part of our business now, uh, tied to tech stars and sometimes not. Uh, we're working. We've already launched 20 companies, and uh, about 70 percent of them are uh, fully funded. So that's very exciting. And um, we're starting an accelerator in Los Angeles um, with uh, the LA Dodgers and Guggenheim Partners around um, uh, sports. And then we have one that we're starting in San Francisco around retail and one in Berlin around hospitality. So it's become a really great uh, way for us to um, innovate with uh, with very uh, cool ideas around the Internet of Things or, uh, or things that we're really interested in. Um, so that, that part's uh, going to be presented on Wednesday. On, um, do they, how do those companies, um, do they inspire and, and sort of cross-fertilize with RGA? Do they, is there a sharing of, of knowledge and um, experience and innovation? Um, there's there's a tremendous amount of um, sharing. They, they're with us for about three months, and um, we we put all of our best assets in terms of capabilities and departments and uh, strategy and videos and uh, all that uh, into each one of the startups, um, and they have a much better chance um, of getting funded. Uh, after we're done working with them and it's a real mutually great relationship for both of us and what they've taught us is how to work a lot faster how to come up uh, conceptually with new ideas and um, uh, I think the most thing is the most interesting thing is how quickly we um, we, we come to uh, an understanding and good ideas together and you're, you're famous for sort of reinventing the RJ approach um, every few years. I think it's every eight, how many years? Nine years. Every nine years. So uh, do you think that as an industry we're moving fast enough to, to um, explore these new areas? Uh, no. Um, I would think that, um, that the industry has to move a lot faster. And um, you know, I think it's uh, more and more moving in, in the direction of the kinds of things that we do um, uh, in terms of so-called digital and you know, production that's informed by the internet, mobile, and social, um, uh, social media, whatever. I mean, that's a big term. Uh, but um, to do production that's uh, combining uh, production with contextually relevant social media. Um, I think that it's all going to um, change. I, I don't see particularly uh, a great spot for metaphorical commercial production. So I think the agencies are going to really have to um, transition into something different. I see some that are already doing a good job at that and some that are very slow. Um, but. Uh, it doesn't mean that the metaphorical commercial will go away. It's just it'll become a smaller part of the overall mix, and th that's really what I see. Does that? Because you've been you have been doing this for a long, quite a long time now. For which? You're, you've been doing RGA. You've been doing. You've been in this business yeah. for a long time. 
Is it that that constant change that actually keeps you interested and excited? I think so. I think um, our nine-year cycle sort of ties in to um, technology disrupting just about everything. Um, so um, the constant change is what makes it very interesting for us. Right now we're in a nine-year cycle that's based on functional integration that puts the consumer in the center and surrounds them with products and services, much like Apple or Google or Nike um, or Amazon do. And I think that is the model of the uh, future. And I think that um, I'm, I'm definitely interested in creating a global footprint. And the global footprint, uh, we now have 17 offices throughout the world. We'll be adding more. We probably need 30. So um, we're becoming very good at starting up. We just started up Shanghai. We just started up an office in uh, Santiago, Chile in Istanbul, as an example. And we've become very good at that. And uh, what I really want to be great at is not just being able to provide our clients that are global with global capabilities, but I want to be the best at um, uh, doing things like um, networking. So what I mean by that is creating a networked uh, company would mean um, we'd use uh, uh, video conferencing, uh, whether it's Microsoft or Google, and we would have it in all the offices and on everybody's uh, phone and on everybody's laptop and, and um, desktop, um, and, uh, and that they'd be truly connected in a way that um, is going to be extraordinary. We're building a space um, on um, West 33rd, 33rd and 10th. We're working with Sir Norman Foster uh, and Foster and Partners and some great uh, subcontractors. And we'll move in in um, December. It'll be 220,000 square feet. And we'll really tie it into all of our other locations in a unique way. And it'll be the very first physical space that's tied into the digital landscape. So that gets me very excited. Clients are, are keeping pace, or do you get frustrated sometimes that maybe clients are No, I don't are think they're uh, keeping pace, and I don't think that they feel that they are. I think one of their big is issues, same as us, would be talent and talent retention, um, acquisition of interesting people to solve uh, new problems for the clients. And uh, no, they all, um, everybody I meet with feels that they're quite a bit behind. Is that a reason for them to, to be here in Cannes? I think Cannes is a great experience outside of the awards and um, I think the most important part would be the, um, uh, the lectures and uh, the, the sort of networking that goes on because you can meet so many people in such a short time and there's no way to do that otherwise. So we've sort of made a choice that can is something, I think we probably have 35 to 40 people here. Uh, we're going to do a major um, uh, a group of people going to uh, CES and then also the uh, World Mo Mobile Congress in Barcelona. I think those are perhaps the three most important. And what, what's a successful can look like for you? Well, it's exhausting. I mean, I... Um, I come in already exhausted um, with a lack of sleep because I can't sleep on planes. And then I start uh, just, you know, meeting after meeting. And I think at the end of the week, I, I certainly have learned a lot. Uh, I can't say I enjoy all of it, but um, I see a lot of people that I wouldn't see otherwise, which is great, and catch up. and and meet new people, and I think it's just extraordinary. I think, I don't see a way, I, a reason why we wouldn't uh, make this uh, an even bigger event for our GA. Is it important for, to you to, to win something this week, to, to win big this week? Uh, I think it's, um, we've already won more than I would have expected we would win in the festival the first night. 
and so everything else is sort of great. Um, I think that it's great for um, acquisition and retention of talent, which is one of our biggest issues. And then, uh, you know, it's judged by our peers, so I think we don't always agree with them and they don't always like what we're presenting, but I think it's really a, a, a fair um, analysis of what's best. And um, I think everybody's trying to judge um, in what they feel is the best possible way. And it's very international. It's not like a U.S. Uh, jury. The people come from all over the world, and it really adds to it all. And I think, I think overall it's just an uh, extraordinary experience. Best of luck for a successful week, Bob. Thank you Thank so you very much. much. Thank you.